Lollapalooza, the original Alterna Rock summer tour, died this week at the age of seven from a faltering of its fitness factor and complications brought on by competition. The tour was pronounced dead by co-founder Ted Gardner, who also cited a severe deficiency of A-list star power. Mourners were asked to remember Lollapalooza not in its years of decline, but in its giddy infancy way back in the day. I want everybody to just, you know, meet each other and know each other, you know, like a big body of musicians that all know each other. Only good things can come of it. Conceived in a fever dream by Perry Farrell in 1991, Lollapalooza was born in a time before the whole world smelled like teen spirit, a time when the term alternative had some tiny bit of meaning in describing the various non-chart-topping but still often terrific acts bundled together on the Lollapalooza stages. <laughs> For many of these acts, Lollapalooza offered the first opportunity to crawl out of their caves and play dazed and blinking in the bright light of day. I've never done a daytime show, I don't think any of us have, so it's going to be a new experience, but I'm pretty sure we'll get through it. Despite such stresses, the band found support in the presence of so many of their peers. Lollapalooza did, in fact, live up, at least in part, to Pharrell's original boho vision of a traveling artist's colony. I think it's a pretty cool idea to have a bunch of these different types of bands with different types of music. And getting, talking to people, getting to know people. The community feel. I hate this f***ing play! <laughs> Occasional malcontent notwithstanding, Lollapalooza strove to create good vibes, and nowhere more so than in the tour's innovative midway area, a sprawling bazaar of political cause booths, potty piercers, stomach-churning thrill rides, and even an old-timey freak show. And he actually can pick up a cinder block oh. with his penis, because he has a pierced penis, which to me is sort of a strange thing. What really kept the Lollapalooza tour going, though, was its basic bottom-line premise. Kids basically still are excited at the prospect of, like, seeing a lot of bands for a relatively low amount of money. Despite the occasional seasonal fever... It's hot. Ah, it's getting cooler now. What is it, like 102 now? I need a drink. <laughs> Can I have some of your water? Lollapalooza remained healthy until 1996, when the organizers shocked a lot of the faithful by signing up the veteran mega-platinum band Metallica to headline. <laughs> A lot of Palooza people wanted to really throw this for a curve, and obviously they did that. It was apparently too much of a curve for Perry Farrell, who bowed out of the tour that year. He returned in 97, but the show he helped to mount that season was scattered and lacking in the old Lollapalooza spirit. It's just a move me. It's just a move me. The 97 lineup attempted to unite such diverse acts as Tricky, Corn, Snoop Dogg, and Orbital, but the result just felt like a random collection of bands, and ticket sales went soft. <laughs> Ironically, as Lollapalooza sputtered through its final season, its commercial offspring, the OzFest, Lilith Fair, the Warp Tour, were growing fat and prosperous. In the end, after semi-desperate attempts to sign a headliner for Lollapalooza 98 drew refusals from a string of high-profile acts, the organizers were forced to pull the plug on the once-vibrant event and pronounce it, well, over.